So, first of all, Jamie, just want to recap on what we tried to do last night on Instagram and say thanks very much for joining us on this. The purpose of this interview, I suppose, this chat between the two of us is to maybe bring some confidence to some SME businesses that are struggling in the current environment with COVID-19. We're going to do this every week, guys, at around 8 o'clock on a Thursday evening, usually. Um, and the whole idea, as I said, is to try and bring some some kind of solidarity to this current environment that SMEs find yourself in. I think most people know of a couple of businesses, and everyone knows that Jamie is involved in a number of different businesses as a shareholder. And also, in fairness to Jamie, which he only reminded me last week, and he was involved in a couple of the bars, but you forget that the bars are shut down as well. Like, we're still working away in Paxton and Ask Paul and Clear Choice, but uh, obviously bars are closed and staff are laid off. So, Jamie, you might just kick this off and give us a kind of run-through of what the last couple of weeks has been like for you from a small business, because obviously, as well as yeah. all that, being the, being the brand manager for, for Flender, you're obviously seeing an awful lot of people coming in looking for money, looking for lending, and then people that are still trying to invest at a good time as well. But before we get into the flender and the lending, what's the crack with the yeah. business and how he is hoping and what are you doing? Well, like, I mean, so I'm seeing it, like you said, Paul, from, from uh, the last couple of weeks have been a, a roller coaster from um, numerous different angles. Like, you know, you meant you touched on the pubs. Like on a Sunday morning, we need to let go 70 people across two pubs, you know, and that's, uh, you know, that, that's... That's just not a nice conversation, especially when you oh. you build it over. Uh, we're going uh, six years, you know. So you, you go from building one pub to two pubs and seventy people across those two pubs, and you know what that means to them. Um, you know, some of them are. You know, it's 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 pays for the mortgage, pays for the rent, you know, pays whatever. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, so it, it's tough and, and you have to wear that hat for a little while and how you plan that and how you work your way through it, um, you know, and, and position yourself to be able to ride these waves out um, hoping and, and not like I'm, I'm the eternal optimist. I mean, I said it to you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a realist in my, in, my, um, in my planning. I'm an optimist in my thinking. Um, and not, so I'm optimistic that there will be a finish line. We will be back open at some stage. You've got to yeah. plan for that. Ride the wave and plan for that. So you're seeing that as a, a very much an SME owner. Then as an investor, um, separate to what I do with uh, Flender and that, you know, I've invested in seven different companies across seven different um, industries. And it's quite interesting seeing, you know, from an investor point of view, how um, you, know, you have to look at your burn rate in terms of, uh, you know, what you got in the bank account, how long can you last? Are VCs investing money? Are they not? Are they shy? Um, what's the market like for your product, whatever different vertical you're in? Um, you know, are we in a sales mode right now? Or actually, are we flipped that on its head? Are we in a protective mode where we're yeah. working with our current clients and not worrying about growing the business, more like pruning and, and really like building those, um, um, like those relationships, you know, really yeah. getting them really, yeah. really, really strong. Um, and then with the Flender thing, you're right in the middle of it. So you're seeing both. You're, you're, you're seeing businesses coming to you, really good businesses coming to you, looking for financing for a multitude of different reasons, not just the bad reasons that people, yeah. you know, come straight to mind. Uh, and then on the lending side, you're seeing, you know, we, we deal with it on two sides. We deal with the institutional lenders, which is like dealing with, dealing with private equity and VC firms. And then also seeing uh, like our, our retail activity has never been bigger. Um, like we had our biggest month ever in March of retail lending. Um, so oh for me, what that is mad. So what that means is that two things. One, um, the one I think is really good is that people are looking to lend on our platform and help Irish SMEs. But yeah. at the same time, they still want to be kind of prudent with how they do it, go through the, the, the checks. Yeah that we do and then also the flip on that is they get a return on their money so they're kind of seeing it at both fronts going i can do good and get a nice kick from it um but it's it, so it's really really interesting to see this multitude of different um things that businesses are going through and then talking to you obviously like how we okay what are we both learning here you know how can we yeah. try and help smes through this because for a lot of smes you know it's it's a scary time um uncertainty breeds a bit of fear in people obviously as well and um, there's no business for a lot of them and, and people are pivoting and all sorts of different things so uh obviously that's what we, we said you and i were like right let's let's try and get some some advice out there yeah. get some get yeah, overseas out there 
Yeah, let's try and help people. And I suppose from an SME point of view, it sometimes is a lonely world for people. Like, you know, uh, it's, it's some, you might have some people watching this and uh, there might be a one-man show or two or three and they might not have that network. I'm lucky enough, uh, you know, we've got nearly 28 staff in total. You mentioned over 70 just in the pubs or everything else. Um, so we've got a big kind of support or a big family and my business packs. It is like a big family in fairness. So, um yeah, I think I think it must be hard if you're a smaller business and you're trying to see what's going on or talk to you as well. So I think what we do over the next couple of weeks, I mentioned this already before we went live on this, is that we're going to take questions between now and next order. Next order, we're trying to get into the questions. But for the time being, we have a couple of questions in, Jamie. I think we mean you discussed this already. So number one, in my opinion, I think you might agree with me on this. If you're an SME business, the first thing you have to do is probably just take stock of what you have, where you currently are at the moment, and start yeah. cutting the cost. You mentioned yesterday we were talking about the Sky Sports and the pubs, like, you know, cutting that bill at maybe two and a half grand. Uh, I said yeah. that someone came in to me uh, last night and was saying to me, uh, I cut my Sky Sports over 30 quid and then Jamie spent two and a half grand for the pubs. <laughs> but uh, I thought it was a good one. But yeah, you have to literally just look at what's, what you have at the moment uh, and what kind of stock you have or what kind of sales you have. You mentioned this, Jamie, already looking at your existing clients even. Might be just a time to wrap your arms around them, make sure they're still there when this all COVID-19 thing is over. But I do think cut your costs as much as possible uh, and just get into survivor mode and don't wait for next week or the following week uh, and, and, and maybe start communicating with landlords, banks, uh, don't wait for them to come to you because they won't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you have to take the bull by the horns. You mentioned this yesterday as well, briefly, Jamie, as well, didn't you, in relation to the into the free the freehold and the different the mortgages and the leases. Well, I think, yeah, I, I think you've got to look out, like you just touched on there, look at, like, take stock. Who Who... Firstly, who are your stakeholders in the business? You know, and, and I don't mean who's invested in the business. I mean, like, okay, uh, what's your biggest cost here? Is it your mortgage? Is it your rent? Is it your rates? Is it different subscriptions you have? Um, you know, is it, is it wages? Okay, and assess all of them. Okay, what can you do in your mortgage? Go mm -hmm. to your bank. See if you can get the three-month uh, moratorium, right? Your landlord, what can you do? Can you get, can you get a three-month moratorium on it? Uh, you know, your finance provider, whoever that is. Are they flexible with you? Okay, that's grand. What about your rates? What are they doing in rates? Are people pushing out rates? Aren't they? Um, you know, subscriptions. We talked about Sky Sports. I even did it personally. I rang up. I rang up Sky, and I was like, "There's no live sports, lads. I'm not paying for this, right?" Yeah. And in fairness, they're like, they put their hands up and they're like, "Yeah, you know what I mean." So there's no, so they're not paying until it's it's back. There's live events again. Um, you know, what else can you look at? You can look at your wages. Like right now, okay. So for some businesses, okay, there's nothing coming in. So they've literally just paired back to the bare bones. You know what I mean? But maybe maybe some businesses are operating, okay? What's essential to your business? You know, who are the essential people? Can people multitask as such? And uh, mm -hmm. can people wear a couple of different hats? Yeah. Um, you know, what's, like, example, I'm, what I'm trying to do, small thing I'm trying to do is two, three times a week, order from the local restaurants or cafe, whatever's kind of ordering food or delivering food around yeah, the place. And I went locally to the chop house and he, he says he has three people in there. He comes in at seven in the morning, does a lot of prep. Another kid comes in at lunchtime, do, helps him out which kind of with finishing. And then a girl comes in at five o'clock to basically put the bags out the front for people to collect. And uh, he goes, that's it. And he actually says it's been so successful he's going to continue it whenever it comes back to normal. Yeah, that's really it. Yeah. I do think that people are going to change how they work. Like I, for one, I'm working from the house here. I've been running around like a headless chicken for the last kind of 18 years of my career, rushing from meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting. This week I did 35 meetings through Zoom with clients, new clients, existing clients, etc. And I'm like, I'm never getting into that Jeep ever again. I'm not getting out. I'm not doing that traffic thing anymore. So I do think you're going to see people working differently on the back of this. But although it's a really, yeah. really tough time for people, I do think that hopefully you can try and take some lessons out of this. Sometimes businesses, when they go through this, they could be the making of you. You know, maybe you were spending too much money, maybe you weren't planning enough, and maybe COVID-19 has just put you in a kind of corner where you've had to really think and get that entrepreneurial spirit out and find out where you're going to find I, it. I always think as well, Paul, and I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, like, uh, maybe I'm, I'm, like if you have that, if you have that kind of fixed mindset in terms of this is what we do, uh, this yeah. is how I operate. Um, I think you can potentially get yourself into a lot of trouble there. You need to be flexible, right? Yeah. You need to have a growth mindset here. You need to say, okay, right, this is the landscape. I'm adapting. What does the adapting look like? Does it mean I'm, I'm, you know, I have to cull the herd a little bit and prune things um, to keep the core of the business alive? 
and keep that flame burning and then pour petrol on it when we come out the other side. Yeah. Um, you know, is it, or, you know, do you have the runway for that? Or if you don't have the runway, why didn't you have the runway for that? Um, is it, uh, Good point. Is, we talked about that, you know what I mean? I, and I know you have your thoughts on that. Yeah, I do. I think, I think what people have to realize, if you don't have, if you're an SME business, uh, of your one man show in particular, and you haven't got money in the bank, um, or you haven't kind of prepared for something maybe going wrong. Okay, no one knew it was going to be COVID nineteen, but you always need to have something in the back of the back of the, the bank there to make sure you can survive a downturn in business or something going wrong. Uh, yeah. look, this is that this is definitely massive. But uh, if this if if COVID nineteen is going to wipe you out, I hope I'm not being too patronised the people here, but maybe. It, the particular business you're in and what you built, maybe you have to take stock, take a step back and say, right, this maybe wasn't for me. I've learned from it, shut down the doors and then maybe go again when I was over. What I mean by that is that not being foolish, not borrowing money off maybe parents or family if you can't get out of the bank and trying to keep something alive that just probably won't survive. And that's hard with your business because most people think you'd agree with me when you have a business like a baby, like one of your kids. Uh, and I think that's going to be hard for people to make that call. But, if you can take a step back and really think about this, if you need to pump in really big money over the next few months and you're not going to make it back probably by year end, you probably have to make a tough call. And that is hard for people. But I think that is definitely out there. We see that with Blender. So we see people coming to, one of the things that are coming to us is for working capital. And we look at it, that's something we have to address. It's like, okay, you know, is, is where is this going to be in nine months, 12 months? down the line you know yeah. it's something we have to factor in and i think it's something people got to really ask themselves um, yeah. or can they pivot you know can they can they pivot into like we're seeing a lot of people come to us in terms of they're looking to they're realizing like you are the beauty of working from home okay because we all have to work from home but then how do you enable that to to operate and work as best as it can how do you enable your your employees to operate as best they can working from home you know through different it's uh, laptops, earphones, standing desks, whatever it is at home. Uh, can you pivot your business to be able to deliver? Um, do you need to yeah, deliver? Yeah, just say a couple of my staff are listening in. Don't be mentioning standing desk. Yeah. Right <laughs> 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 Until next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's an interesting one, you know, because um, I, I look, yes, there's, like, let's not, there's, there's no point hiding it. This is going to be tough for a lot of businesses and a lot of businesses are going to go to the wall. Our employment rate is, I think it's the highest it's ever been. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it, it's 17%. Oh, of people. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Back up it's, to, it's, it's so down. high, right? Out of that, yes, there'll be a lot of innovation and there will be some really cool businesses that come out of this. But yeah. um, people have to really ask themselves, you know, the industries they were in and they were let go in, um, is that what they want to be in going forward? Um, you know, and I think that's, you know, take a bit of stock, take a bit of time to, to think about that. And if you are lucky enough to have your business still operating, how are you adapting to this current scenario uh, now? And what are you learning now that will help you in the future? Because anyone you read, you read and talk to about, you know, this pandemics and, and this sort of thing, they're kind of like, well, you know, this could be the new, new where it happens every so often. Yeah. Yeah, it could be actually. That's a you know what? That's a brilliant point. I never even thought of that because if you have to adapt to this one and this happens again in two years, you know, you, you might have to keep adapting every couple of years or something like this keeps happening. Uh, I think that when it comes to, you know, from a small business point of view, I've been talking to a lot of people about their personal finances through Ask Paul, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and we said we do 20, 30 kind of full financial reviews of people on, annual, on, a, on a weekly basis. Uh, and it's great. Um, but I always say to people, this is the perfect time to do that money diet. When you kind of spend too much money and you, don't, you know you have to kind of watch your money, but you never actually get there. But now you're in lockdown. You can't really spend anything other than your food shopping. Okay, maybe go on buy online and buy stuff, which you should, probably shouldn't be. I think it's the exact same for small businesses. I think this is now the time to really cut your costs down and examine where were you a bit loose with your money? Where were you making the wrong decisions? Uh, where were you just overpaying for stuff that you probably didn't need? Did you have that extra staff person? Did you have that extra, I don't know what the cost was, did you have that extra bill coming in that you didn't really need because it made life easier for you as the owner maybe not to put an extra hour in. And if you can reverse that and put that extra hour in, then uh, you know maybe that might save you money in your business over the long term. So I do think that's yeah. a massive uh, possibility for people. Like, you know? And also, also understanding what you can avail of right now. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, so there's a lot that the government are doing. Like things that we never thought they would do or never wow. knew they were capable of doing, right? In terms of enabling SMEs, because they understand that 
I think I think they're taking the viewpoint that there is an end in sight. We yes. don't know when, but there 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 will be another side to this, right? It will come, but, yeah. In order for us to come out the other side, we need the economy operating. We need businesses kind of positioned. So what you're saying is perfectly right. It's like, okay, let's look at, you know, what were we kind of waste of, wasteful on? Okay. But also what can we avail of to keep the business ticking over? You know, is the wage subsidiary scheme, you know, what is your local EI branch doing? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Your enterprise, you know, what, 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 what schemes can you avail of here? Um, because look, we're all going to have to take a take a hit in some shape or fashion here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if we can keep the doors open, fantastic. But then prune that business, take that time that you now have to, okay, what's important, what's not? Where, what am I really good at that I'm not getting to spend most of my time on and why? Yeah. How, do I, how, do, how do I enable myself to spend more time on that, yeah. you know, in terms of what, you know, that, that Pareto rule, you know, what 20% of my time is given 80% of my revenue or even what's generating 80% of my revenue in general in the business. Um, you know, these sort of things are, are, are pretty important. Like what do you, if you're not good at it, how can you outsource it? Is that a contract? Is that an employee? Um, or is it just wasteful, like you like you touched on? And I think you, you, an SME is is not a whole lot different to running a household in, ter in terms of looking at those, looking at your finances in that regard. It's not, and you know, I, you mentioned a couple of things there, Jamie. I think uh, that are really cool. The likes of the EIs, the Enterprise Ireland. Uh, I know uh, I've been getting emails off Rob Rob, Co Rob Cullen Rob Cullen down in uh, the Dublin Chamber. And oh, they're great. They're sending yeah, so they're, much through, like. They are brilliant. The Rob's really good. So we're getting a lot of emails out. We're asking for surveys. So if you're somebody that's down to all the guy, I'd be so busy all year round, but I, I always find it hard to get to these events. But now everyone's doing webinars. That's a great time to maybe upskill in areas that you hadn't got in your business, whether it's that social media course or whether it's reaching out to like Double Chamber or the DLR or whether it's the, the EI and find out what grants are there. Probably the only thing a lot of business people don't do, and I'm kind of a bit guilty of this as well over the years, I'm lucky we've got an executive team in place now, but business plan. Don't so you do a business plan at the very beginning, maybe when you're setting up your business, you never get a chance to actually go back and do the business plan again. Yeah. <laughs> Just put it on the long finger. So now might be the time, if you haven't done that in a couple of years, uh, Get, just get down and get an hour or two or say, right, what's the next phase of my business? This is a big blip. This is time to re, re, regenerate ourselves and get going. Uh, and I, I think or even like, like, it could be, Paul, it could be that idea that you have that like, I never had time to think about that idea or innovate or, you know. Yeah, yeah actually, that's true. Maybe, maybe you're an employee watching this. Uh, not my employees, uh, but if you're an employee and you feel like you want to do something, maybe now's the time, you know, it's, it, 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 can be, uh, it, can be, it can be weird. Like, you know, it'd be a great time for you to think about those things. Yeah, it's, it's look, I mean, you, 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 there's some very, like for some people, yes, they have to, they're, they're kind of think they have to think real short term. They're being laid off. They have to kind of figure their way through this. Okay. And, and you're hoping that the different schemes in place will allow them get through this. Okay. Uh, and, and we'll come out strong, but like we, like the SMEs that are working now, I mean, you've got it, you've got to pivot, you got to figure that out and um, you've got to avail of the schemes that are there and, um, you know, and take the time as well now if you have the time, because some of our business, sorry, some businesses are, are flat out, you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, they yeah. Are, yeah. And, and play, you know what I mean? Fair yeah. play. And, and, and they're adapting and they're going with it. But if you, if you have the time, I would think step back, you know, like you said, do a bit of research on that idea that you had or do that course, online course or online course on something that you were, you, you had an interest in or wanted to know a bit more about, particularly if you're, you know, running a business or a management level and you have that space now um i think that's you got to take the opportunity where when it lies in front of you um and not kind of linger because i think if you linger that's where you might get yourself in trouble i think you've got to set short medium and long-term goals don't be fixed to them because obviously the landscape can change but have some sort of direction and start heading in a direction yeah, the interaction is important. The, the other thing you mentioned there, and I must say, uh, I wouldn't be one for the politics, but I talk about politics in these situations. I must say I'm really impressed with how quick the government have moved for SMEs and moved the back employees and to help SMEs try and keep their staff on the payroll. And I think uh, Pastor Donahue said something about keeping 
your employees close and making sure they're still on payroll and still ticking over. So when you come out the other side, it's not a scramble for trying to get businesses back up and running. So I know I've probably given them a fair shot of a pop over the last number of years, uh, Fianna Fáil, but I do think I'm very impressed with Fianna get and what I've seen uh, over the last number of weeks and months for small businesses. So hopefully that continue. The one thing I'm a bit disappointed, you you kind of alluded to this when we were chatting the other day, Jamie, is the insurance industry. Uh, so yeah. I just... I think there needs to be a bit of a... Where, where do I start, Paul? Where do I start? <laughs> uh, well, look, I mean, it's like when we were talking... So when if I put my SME hat back on, right? Yeah. And we, we looked at the range of things. We were like, okay, bang, mortgages, lease, bang, rates, da-da-da, wages, right? We have to do all these different things. And then the next thing on our list was insurance. And, mm-hmm. you know, we look at our cover. We had, you know, contact with our insurers on it. And, you know, everything was, was positive, positive, and then... Sh- yeah, things went gone. quiet right and then you're like and then a very this is we you know this we're we are not like you're not covered here basically is what they said and i i think we've you, you've read across the, the coverage in the media has been in both the pub and restaurant world on this front has been uh there's been a lot of coverage around it and yeah. uh, pascal mr finance had to pull them in and mm-hmm. give me that too and uh, it'd be very interesting to see how it pans out because there's a there's there's a there's a bit of a it's like a moral thing here. Do you know what I mean? Like this yeah. is really you know the pub world pub world alone uh, pubs directly employ fifty thousand people in in Ireland. Yeah. Um, and God only knows the knock on effect of of suppliers and all sorts of things with that. Um, but you know those insurers, you know. The, They've been, get, they've been saying, oh, we're getting a bad rap these, these last few years with premiums going up and their profits going up. <laughs> and everyone yeah. be kind of going, what's going on? And then they turn around and they don't pay out. On- Jamie, let's, let's be honest here. They're completely taking the piss. Uh, they live like they are. There's no, I tried to show a coat of language words, but they really are taking the piss. Uh, and, it's, you know, it, it's, it, it's difficult. It, it's difficult to work with them on this. Um, yeah. And I think... Um, you know, we'll see what happens after this chat that they've been get the direction that they've been given from both the central bank and the uh, the minister and, of finance yeah. in terms of how they're going to behave. But it's it's um, you know the the realist in me thinks that this won't be solved quickly and it'll be like typical insurance. They will drag it on and it'll be two or three years before we get any sort of answer. And yeah. and that's a shame. Two or three years yeah. for a business is detrimental. It's it's almost like. And we touched on this, the SME financing through, through uh, the pillar banks. And this, you know, you, the pillar banks, uh, Ismay put a study out there. It was the Q4 of 2019 study. It was taken on average six weeks for a bank to say yes or no on an SME loan and then taking another two weeks for them on average to draw down, okay? That's eight weeks. Eight weeks right now for them to, to get money with SME, even with this, um, the CBI or the SCBI involved. It's, it's too long. Yeah, no, it's madness. Not in the current environment, it's madness. And in fairness, I must say, it, I, I did say this already when I was promoting uh, what we were kind of doing the tours, the events. I did say that I used Flender before for one of the businesses, and it was brilliant. I'm not just saying this because you're on, uh, and we're talking about with Flender, but that whole thing of having a quick turnaround of the decision, it's not even the process of getting the money. It's somebody saying, yeah, within 24 hours, getting the paperwork, getting going. And then we went back to Flender with another kind of idea, business wise, and we're growing again. And that was organized top up and money in the bank. It was in three days. It was a ridiculous service. But, and that's what I'm saying, from an SME business point of view, if you've never gone, and again, this is not, we haven't, honestly, rehearsed it's not a pitch for Flender here. It all sounds like one. But if you are thinking about stuff that you maybe felt like you missed and you didn't spend time investigating, whether it was peer to peer lending or whether it was a grant from the Dunleary Rat Down, uh, Leo that I use for one of my businesses as well, in fairness, they were brilliant at the local enterprise office for a start and clear choice for us. Uh, or whether it is going down the Rod Down and the Dunleary Chamber or the, the, the Dublin Chamber and having a chat about what support you can get for your business. Take this time to reach out to these people now so you know when you come out the other side what's involved. Even if it is going to Flander or anybody are trying to find out what's the crack of getting loan, lads, and you need X amount of accounts, just take the next three or four weeks to get those accounts together. Because generally, I find when I went to Flander, it was more I delayed at trying to get the paperwork together for Flander than Flander did put it through the process. So, well, look, uh, I mean, we, 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 we partnered with people like yourself or Big Red Cloud because, you know, they, they're an online software company, so their, their, accounts yeah. are, their accounts are always up to date, you know. And, yeah. and what we're trying to do here is 
look, I don't want to sell the product, right? This is not a time for selling. No, but it's not. We're not doing that either. We're saying how no. easy it is though for businesses, which has a great pitch. Yeah, and I, what I want SMEs to know is that there's options. That's all. Yeah. There's options. Yeah. Yeah. And that what anyone ever wants is options. They don't want just one, one avenue that you can go down. And right now is a time more than ever where you need an array of options to assess and see, okay, which one is fitting with what I need right now? You yeah. know what I mean? And, and I think that's, that's the most important thing that we need to kind of get out to the market. You know, if that's true. And, and like, for example, for you, you know, you, you, know, you, you, can, you can give independent advice on, on, yeah. on the whole plethora of options that are available to you personally and as an SME. You know what yeah. I mean? And I think that's the most important thing that we need to get across to people. Yeah, no, it is. Like I said, I think when people go, look, I think I was, when I was going through the business over the last number of years, sometimes when you're, I suppose, that entrepreneurial thing, when you're trying to grow business, you can sometimes just become a little bit stuck in the mud where you have a concept, that you have an idea, and you can't find your way through it because it's all just so clear. There's a million things going through your brain, and whether success or failure, staff, family, yada, yada, yada. But sometimes you just need a break. And I think this, I know it's been unfortunate what's happened COVID-19 for businesses, but maybe this is the break you need to step back, evaluate, and then reach out to people, try and find out how you grow your business, how you enter. And even, I know a lot of entrepreneurs, Jamie, that don't have, like I didn't go to business college, didn't do it. Uh, you know, went through the insurance industry, did all my exams at even time, and came out the other side the way we have. So I know loads of people that could do it, maybe doing an online business course, or just educating themselves a bit more in business skills, to help their business. So it's not even about the lending part of it. But uh, look, I'm not trying to put too much of a positive spin on it. It's <laughs> faster for people here. Uh, let's, let's, not, let's not take 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 it away from the, the awful situation awful people find themselves in. But let's try and, try and get the positivity going on it and try and use the time to upscale, invest in yeah, your business. Yeah, like, like you said, invest. I think... You be real with, be real with uh, your thinking and your planning, but then be the optimist in... in, in in, in where it might go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, look, it's going to be tough and that's why you need an array of options because you're going to have different problems and you'll need different solutions. Yeah. Um, and like, you know, it's always good to go to someone independent, separated from them all for a bit of guidance on it. And uh, we work, you know, we work with loads of third party brokers in that regard. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, but, but I think for an, for an SME now, you know, like we said, if, if, you're, if you're like, what's the here and the now? You know, look at the short term, you know, survive um, and then try and kind of like kind of almost sustain yourself through it. So survive first, sustain yourself for, through it. And then if you get time, start planning to set yourself up for success when you come out the other side. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I do. I think, I think that's vital. And look, Jamie, I think that's a great note to probably uh, finish up. We're trying to keep these a half an hour so people's attention span and kids throw stuff over their heads and even though I won't get I'm surprised you know, one of our kids kind of lingered well, in, my, in the background. My young lad, Luca, is three. I just walked into the office and took a can of seven up off my table as I was talking. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I nearly had an interruption. But listen, it's been great. And we're going to do is we're going to do this every Thursday evening. Probably on our Zoom, we'll try probably Instagram again next week. But we're going to, if you're, if you're listening to this, try or watching us, try and get questions into us. I think next week we might probably start off talking about finance and where you can go for finance and the options that are available yeah. and try and bring in one or two business lessons on each half an hour session over the next 12 weeks. I think that would really give people benefit that we're giving a little bit of knowledge over. Uh, yeah. So look, Jamie, thanks uh, for joining me again. And uh, Actually, you're the host. Sorry, I should thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no look I think Paul this, look, I mean it's, it's a pleasure from my point of view to be, be teamed up with you here and I think hopefully we can we can you know we're, we're, we're seeing it from a couple of different angles hopefully we can bring that together and, and just put it out there into the world in a positive way and, and, and hopefully that helps a couple of people out yeah brilliant cheers Jamie listen have a lovely evening with the family we'll talk to you soon alright alright take care Thanks. bye bye